Hello, my name is Bruce Finney, and I am the Global Product Manager for Motor Protection Solutions within the industrial component business. Today I'll be going through a demonstration that shows the E300 overload relay on DeviceNet, how it functions and acts within the RS Networks for DeviceNet interface. In addition, I will also demonstrate the new feature that when combined with the E300 Series B control module, can transition the device into what's called an E3 or E3 plus emulation mode. Essentially, this mode offers the same features and functionality of an E3 or E3 plus device uh, from a virtual standpoint. So it basically takes the same parameter set of the E300, but it puts it into a reduced fashion, thereby mimicking identically the E3 or E3 plus device selected. So with that, let's begin. So as you can see, the E300 overload relay on DeviceNet now shows up as a detectable node within the RS Networks for DeviceNet interface. And on the left-hand side here, if you were to select a, the motor overload um, components and with the appropriate EDS file, the E300 will now be will show up as an option there um, in that tree. When I click on the device and select properties, you can see the properties for the overload relay come up showing uh, some basic information about the device itself. Um, you can see the catalog number, the device, the type, um, and the firmware revision. Up along the top you have the accessible tabs uh, for the device itself. So if we go to the parameters tab, a message will come up that it wants to either upload or download uh, from the device or to the device depending on which stage of the commissioning you're in. So for this particular demonstration, we will upload from the device since we want to use the parameter set that I already have configured. So with the device configured as an E300, it does take a bit to go through and upload each individual parameter over the device net network. So we will give this a few moments until it is finished. There we go. And as you can see, all the parameters that you would see typically on the Ethernet IP interface or via the web server are also shown here in the RS Networks for DeviceNet interface. So you can view the parameters in a linear list if you're looking for, for one specific parameter, or as I typically like to see them um, in groups like the web server uh, based on functions. So here this gives a little bit better overview of how the parameters are organized uh, from a function standpoint. So you can go into overload setup and again you have access to change you know all the configurables, the same configurable parameters, FLA, trip class, reset mode, um, anything that was configurable uh, on the Ethernet IP interface is also configurable on the device net interface. In addition, you have access to the EDS file. You can see, uh, view that file, and I'll also download a copy of that. And then uh, from a device logics perspective, you also have access to that interface here where you would be able to start the uh, logics editor for device logics uh, through this tab. But if we go back through to the parameter settings here, we can actually now, like I said, configure this device as an emulated E3 or E3 plus device. And it's a fairly easy parameter to remember, in my opinion, because it is parameter 300. So if we navigate to that parameter specifically, you will see that the emulation mode is presently disabled. But if we go to enable it, we're able to select whichever E3 or E3 Plus device we wish. And what's nice is in parentheses, it actually shows you what size of that component is that you're looking to emulate, meaning you don't necessarily have to remember the exact catalog string or part number, um, something that's you know not less intuitive that way. You can basically pick based on the size of the E3 or E3 Plus device that you have. One other thing to note about this, based on the E300 components that you have selected, for instance, for this demonstration, I'm using a 6 to 60 amp sensing module. I would not be able to select an E3 or E3 Plus device outside of that range. And if you did, what's going to happen is the interface is going to display a fault for that. So for this particular demonstration, I am going to pick an E3 Plus 9 to 45 amp to emulate. 
So once you have that selected, click Apply. It'll ask if you want to download the configuration to the device and update the device. So it'll have to take the logic offline to do that. Select Yes. Download was successful and the device is then uh, going to be reinitialized. Okay. So then we click OK to get out of this window. And one thing, again, to note with the device net interface, uh, since this change was made online, you basically have to take the component or the, uh, the system offline, delete the node, and then rescan the nodes um, to reinitialize your network and, and redetect the devices that are on there. So if we hit delete and then we do a rescan, the device should now show up as an E3 Plus 9 to 45 amp device. And there we go. You can see that as I did my device net scan, the, the component now shows up as an E3 Plus. So again, similarly, we can click on that and select properties. And you'll notice here that the firmware revision is different. When it was an E300, since I have a Series B control module installed, we were at a firmware revision 7.xx. But now since I'm in an emulated E3 Plus, the firmware revision is now 6.xxx for this being a legacy device. So again, similarly, we can go into the parameter section and do an upload again. Um, and you'll notice that it'll take a lot less time because as I said, since this is an emulated E3 Plus device, there's a very reduced parameter set uh, for this particular component. So again, it mimics exactly an E3 Plus 9 to 45 amp device in this emulation mode. So as you scroll through the linear list, you'll see, um, like I said, a, a reduced parameter set in that regard. And again, linear list, or you can view them in groups. So all the parameters that were added um, in addition to the E3 Plus didn't necessarily line up one to one. So if you wanted to put the device back into an E300, uh, the parameter for that, again, it's still somewhat uh, memorable. It's e parameter 303 instead of 300. So as you can see on my screen here, that's what I have uh, highlighted. And we can go into there and disable that. Again, apply. Again, it will go through um, and upload this change and then reinitialize the device. Okay, we click OK to remove this window. And again, as I said, we take the device net network offline, delete the node that was changed, and then do a rescan, and it should come up now and show the device as an E300. And there you have it. So again, this was a demonstration of the E300 overload relay on DeviceNet and the feature called E3 or E3 Plus emulation mode. Thank you for watching.